Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for how do I combo box on selection changed event a bonus video. So let me go ahead and run this. If you watched the previous video, this should be pretty similar, except I actually put in some real names this time for the options. So when we run it, we have our different options like Jeep, tank, and aircraft. When we choose the first set in here, it's going to fill out the second set. So you can see small, medium, or large. Or if I change it to tank, see Panzer, M1 Abrams, and T55. And if I have a valid selection chosen right now, it'll tell me what I selected. So not much difference. Well, the purpose of this video is someone, when I mentioned the previous video, someone, when I mentioned the previous video, I mentioned that you could possibly use arrays or other ways in order to make it more efficient so you weren't typing in different names and numbers and you could keep things easier if you happen to update it. So I went ahead, someone asked me, well, do you have an example of doing that? So I went ahead and whipped something up. That's what this video is going to be. It's a bonus. It's going to explain another way of maybe iterating over the last project and improving it a little bit. Now there are still other ways of doing this. There are enumerators, which are nice, but the problem with the enumerators is there's no way of getting the index of the chosen one. And to make things more efficiently, I went with using indexes and arrays work great with that. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, the arrays that I will be using are twofold. There is a string array called vehicle types that I created and it simply holds the type of vehicles that you will be using. In this case, Jeep, tank, and aircraft. Let me go ahead and delete this third one so I can show you how this works in real time. So you're going to need an index of your vehicle types. That's my array called vehicle types. In addition to that, I have another array of structs that simply hold strings. Since you can't really do nested arrays like an array of arrays, you can do an array of structs with hold arrays. Basically, I have this structure which simply holds, let's pull up the structure, would probably be smarter, here we go. This is a structure and all it's holding is an array of strings. That's it. It's simply used for the different subtypes of vehicles. So in this case, if we pulled it up, you notice I have subtype for vehicle one, which is our first one, index zero, which is our Jeep, and I have small, medium, and large. And then index one, which is our second item, I have Panzer, M1, A1 Abrams, and T55. So these are the subtypes or the option box two for the main types or option box one. So since I have that set up, what we're doing is during the construction of this event, because previously we had them in options as default, now our combo box is empty. So during the construction, I basically take all of our vehicle types, loop through them using a for each loop and add them to my combo box. So what that accomplishes is our first combo box fills up with Jeep and tank. Keep in mind it says Jeep and tank now because I raced aircraft. We'll be adding that shortly. So after it adds it in, basically the second changes are really to the second and end part, if you notice here, of our combo box. Let's pull up our old other combo box. This was the previous example. And when we selected the first combo box, we had this first part here. And if we check out this, we have the same thing. Basically, we're just taking our item, storing it for later use, and then clearing out combo box two. The biggest change is this second part right here, these selected nodes. This is the new version, and this is the old version. And as you can see, basically, I had to go figure out which one we chose, and then based on what we chose, added in options manually by naming them. With the new version, since we've already named them in our arrays, it's automatically going to figure out what we selected and then use another loop to add them. So how that works is I take combo box one and I take the selected item from combo box one. Remember, we save it right here. And then I use the find option index. This basically tells me what is the index of our chosen item. Then I go to our vehicle info array, and remember it contains two things, zero and one. I tell it, based on its index, to give me back an array of strings. Now if we unhook this, this is important. When you get back this 
struct, you're going to get back the piece of struct. You're going to get back the structure, which means you're going to get back this entire thing. You're going to get back this right here. If I split the struct pin, because remember, it's a struct. It contains things. Now, instead of giving me back just the vehicle types, it's going to give me back an array of the individual elements, which is what I want. So when I plug this into here, all of this part right here is saying, okay, combo box, what's your index for this item? Combo box says zero. Okay, vehicle info, what's at index zero? And it says, here you go. And it gives me back that array, which is gonna be my array of Jeep parts. Then I do the same thing, a for each loop. I loop through each of those strings of the Jeep, small, medium, and large, and add it to combo box too. So right there, we've gone ahead and basically automatically added in the ability to auto add things if I update my arrays. I don't have to write out strings. I'll show you how I'm going to do that when I add an aircraft shortly. The next part is going to be pretty much identical. This is our on selection changed. The only thing I actually did was add in this part. There was a small little bug that if you accidentally chose something that didn't have a match, it wasn't erasing the text. This is just a bug fix. But you'll notice between that and this, they're going to be the same. The last part is our biggest change, and it's actually got a lot of spaghetti code, which where I'll show you how to compact and reuse. So this is when we click the push me button. Here's the old version, which basically took in the option, switched based on the option, and then switched again and gave you the result. The key here is on these ones, we're switching on string, and I had to manually type in all the names. So if you were to add something else, You'd have to add it in here and here and any previous option, make sure they're spelled properly. The new version, since we're using arrays, it actually switches on integer on the index. We did this before, basically what is the index for the item we chose in combo box one, and then switch. So if we chose the first item, index zero, it's gonna do this branch or index one or index two. You notice I didn't have to write any names in there. I just have to make sure I have enough pins for each of the items. The next part is almost identical. We're basically going to figure out in combo box one what we select in, get the array from there, which we did earlier. So now we know inside of our vehicle info, we know which one of these arrays, zero or one, we have selected. And then based on what we selected in the part two, we figure out what the index is. So basically index of combo box one, index of combo box two, and then we chain off to our endpoint. Now in here, I kind of cheated for this example. All I'm doing is basically setting the text node to be an appended string based on what we selected. That way it looks better. But in here, you would basically break it down to, okay, now we've selected option zero and option zero. So that's small Jeep. What are we gonna do? So let's go ahead and if we run through this, you'll notice we have Jeep and tank. If we choose tank, we have Panzer, M1 Abrams, and T-55. If we choose one and push it, something will happen. Now I have nothing hooked up, so nothing happens. If I go back to small Jeep, you'll notice Jeep small. Now let's say you're going to add on something. We're going to add aircraft now. Well, it's pretty simple. We go to our vehicle types. This defines all of our types of vehicles. Let's add in an aircraft. And we, if we go ahead and save this, not changing any other code and hit play, you'll notice we now have aircraft here automatically. Now if we choose aircraft, nothing will fill in our second part. Our second part is controlled by our vehicle info. So that is our third vehicle. Let's add a new one. Let's add a few different types of members. Keep in mind, you can add multiple types. You don't have to have three. I can, I'll do a four this time. Let's go with, um, since I can't think of any names, we'll go with tiny and we'll go with small and we'll go with large and we'll go with oh jumbo jet will work we'll go with jumbo there we go so now we have four different elements for our aircraft again don't change any code we hit play we have aircraft and we have four different types of aircraft we can still go back to tank and have three different types of tank and if you notice all of those added in and i didn't have to change any code this time none of these had to change none of that had to be done now the only thing you will have to do when you add in new types is you'll have to add on to your switches. Like here is our main types. We have three vehicles, so we have three switches. And then down here you have your different types. Like on vehicle zero, three options, so we have three switches. 
Vehicle 2, we should have another switch on it. And this one would have to have 4. Because we have 4 different options. If we go in here, we can shut off default, and now we have 4 different options. Now you may notice a lot of this stuff is going to get clustered and it's going to become a big mess. So this is a good example of reusing code. Look through and see if there's stuff you can reuse. Right here, for example, we're looking and getting and returning back the types from our combo box one. Down here, if I can find it, we are doing the same thing. We're looking and finding and getting and returning the results from combo box one. Right here, we are looking and finding the index for combo box one and returning the index. And I think I did that somewhere else. No, we just technically did it here. So for example, this is a great way of reusing things. Actually, I think, right, yeah, here I did it. So for example, we could take this and we could collapse it to a macro and <laughs> call it something way, way different than that. Oh my gosh, that is evil. Uh, let's see, we'll call this one um, return type array. There we go. And it's returning back a huge, the evil name. So if we go in there, and there's our input, there's our output. Let's name this um, array like that. And we go back to our event graph. And now we have one node that's going to return back our array. And if we were to go to our other section that used that, if we can figure out where it's at, it's right here, right? We can actually take this and delete it, pull out our macro and plug it in. And there we go. We can go ahead and hit play. And if I did it right, Jeep, medium, selected Jeep and medium. There we go. We condensed all of that into one little macro. And if you notice this is now cleaner like that. Now it's a much smaller instead of a big mess. You could even condense down this one since we've used it in more than one spot. A good way, a good thing to condense would be these ones right here. Condense these down into functions or into macros. Where basically, actually condense into a function would be a good one. Let's do this. This collapses to a function like that. And even though we're not going to return anything, it's nice because we can edit it easily. And we'll call this one... Um, Let's see, selected zero, selected um, option one. We'll go selected option one. Makes it easier. And you notice it takes in a selection. We pull it up. We can plug this in here. And now we have all of this like this. Now we're not going to use the return node for anything. Maybe we could use it for something else. But for now, I like this in a function instead of a macro because it's easy to keep track of. But the nice thing about this, if you notice, we have the ability, if we were to add on more options, we now can add them inside of this little node rather than having that node take up a giant space. So if we were to put another, this is going to kind of, well, technically, okay, yeah, technically this is all the same. So this is kind of cool. Watch, you can do this, and you can do this, and you can do this. And then we can go two, and we can go three. Do this. Move this up so it's straight. There we go. And in theory, since we have nothing really unique here, just a switch on int giving us back a result, if we were to hit play, we should be able to get, yep, tank and M1 Abrams, aircraft, large taking large now keep in mind jumbo aircraft is not going to work because this is option four and we're only passing in up to three options so that's something to keep in mind this isn't obviously an example of you know doing it 100 percent, but that's an example of cleaning up your graph from that giant mess now we have a smaller mess and again everything's reusable i could add another vehicle type by adding another vehicle type i could go to vehicle info then Add in the vehicle info. Now I've added all those things to the combo box and everything will cascade down properly. The only thing that you're really going to need to do is make sure you have the appropriate number of switches here for your types of vehicles in this example. So your major, your master array and make sure each of the actual functions or nodes or macros or whatever you're going to pull off of that have the appropriate reaction.
spawning something, changing the color of something. I mean, this is a good way of changing the color of something really easily. So keep that in mind. So that's going to wrap it up. Hopefully that helped the person who asked this question. If there's any comments or more questions, please feel free to leave them below.